today is Crimson. If you enjoy these plays, please hit that like button. That way we know. Don't forget to subscribe and share it with all your friends. <laughs> the Case Book of Sydney Chase. Produced and edited by Crimson McKenzie. Written and directed by Winslow Swan. And featuring Dave Arkhipov, Winslow Swan. And starring Crimson McKenzie as Sydney Chase. Tonight's episode, The Neighbor. Uh, hello, Dr. Alex McDougal speaking. Alex, as quick as you can, get over to my place. Uh, Sydney, is everything all right? No, everything is not all right. I have a lot to tell you, and I don't want to do it over the phone. All right, Sydney, I'm here. Now, tell me, what is this big emergency? Well, now that I've thought about it, it isn't so much an emergency, but more of a gut Hey, why don't I fix us some drinks and you can start at the beginning? It began last Monday. You remember Mr. Jacobs in 2B? B well, only in passing. Well, he moved out about a week ago. He decided that Florida was much nicer. Which it is. Anyway, a new tenant moved in Monday. I happened to be outside the office when she pulled up... Hello, neighbor. Hello. I'm Terry Stewart, moving into 2B. Welcome to the neighborhood. I'm... The famous Sidney Chase, private detective. I wouldn't say famous. At least not yet, anyway. <laughs> then the very modest Sidney <laughs> Chase. <laughs> so what brings you to the city? Boredom. I'm originally from Seattle, and I needed a change. You could have, I mean, couldn't have picked a nicer place. And I live directly upstairs from a private detective, which means that I will sleep easier. Most of my cases involve lost dogs or stolen jewelry. Not quite as exciting as you may think. <laughs> you mean it isn't like what I've read in books and seen on TV? Oh, yes. <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> Most of the time I'm scouring newspapers or the internet, gathering information for my clients. Well, maybe one day I can hire you. Just ring the bell or holla loud and I'll come running. I may take you up on that offer sooner than you think. Mm, very intriguing, Sydney. It was what happened after you left Wednesday night that has me wondering. My tummy started grumbling and I decided to walk down to that all-night deli. You know how I love my subs. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, I was locking the door and... Sydney? What? Oh, Terry, you scared the life out of me. Sydney, was that offer the other day genuine? I mean, could I really hire you? Of course you can. What's going on, Terry? I'm in trouble, Sydney. Real trouble. Maybe you should come in and tell me about it. I can't right now. I have to meet someone. I'm hoping that after this meeting, it will be the end of it. Would you like me to come with? No! This is something that I have to take care of on my own. I tell you what, I will stop by afterwards. Hopefully it won't matter, but I have to tell someone. Okay. How long do you think this meeting will take? I should be back in an hour, if that isn't too late. No, not late at all. Just ring the bell. I still don't understand. What did she tell you when you saw her later? That's just it. She never came back. I waited until almost three in the morning. I didn't see her at all yesterday, even though I knocked on her door a couple of times. 
several. Well, perhaps her meeting went longer than expected, and she was simply sleeping in. That was my first thought. Let me guess. You broke in. Alex! You know that's against the law. Yes, it's called breaking and entering. So tell me, what did you find? I am insulted, Alex McGoogle. You really think that I would do such a criminal act? What did you find? <laughs> you know me too well. It's what I didn't find that has me worried. Oh? Hardly any furniture. No clothes in any of the closets. No food whatsoever. Not in the fridge or the cupboards. Not even one dirty dish. Well, she did just move in. Perhaps she is waiting for her things to be delivered. As for the food, well, many people only eat out when they first move in. Some of us even longer than that. No, I didn't say that, Sydney. You didn't have to, Alex. Well, come on, out with it. I know something else happened that had you calling me in a panic. About an hour before I called you, I was just returning home from the meeting with a client when... Hi, neighbor! I was wondering what happened to you the other night. Beg your pardon? Do I know you? Uh, well, sort of. I'm Sydney Chase. Remember? I believe I have not had the pleasure. I am Terry Stewart. Yes, I know. We met on Monday. I have never met you in my whole life. Now, if you would excuse me, please. Mm, that is very strange. Are you sure that it was the same woman you met Monday? Extremely sure. I used to be a cop, and we tend to notice little things like that. So, what are you planning to do? That's just it! I haven't the slightest idea! Well, well, as I live and breathe, the great detective, Sidney Chase. All right, Chase. What brings you downtown to my office? What? Can I just drop in on an old friend? <laughs> what friends do you have down here? Now that's hurtful, Ferrari. Can't you call me anything other than that? Not unless I want my daddy washing my mouth out with soap. I can't. <laughs> just cut to the chase, Chase. <laughs> oh, look. He made a funny. <laughs> Seriously, Tony, could you just do me a small favor? What is it this time? Could you run a name for me? Terry Stewart. Why, of, of course I can. This stack of reports will simply write themselves while I do your work for you. It just takes a minute, Tony. Uh, got anything other than a name? Just apartment 2B in my building. Well, now, this is interesting. What is it? Absolutely Nothing. What? No record on a Terry Stewart. What about a driver's license? See for yourself. Tony, are you sure about this being Terry Stewart? She said that she was originally from Seattle. Yep, I'm sure. See? Turned in her Seattle license when she got her new one. No wants, no warrants. Perfect driving record. Now, is there anything else you can waste my time with? Yes. You can tell me who I met last week. What are you talking about? That picture on her license is not the girl that I met. Are you positive that Ferraro didn't make a mistake? We checked it three times, Alex. How do you feel about being a lookout for me? Sydney, will you hurry up? It'll only take a second. There's nothing here anyway. <gasps> Hang on. Oh, did, did you did you find something? It's a credit card receipt from the deli. Well, Terry must love subs as much as I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Turkey Club with American Cheese. Why are the two of you in my apartment? Who are you, exactly? Miss Chase. I have told you once. I am Terry Stewart. And for the last time, what are are you doing in my apartment? Uh, Sydney, is this... Not the one I met. 
not the one on the license and not the one who invited me here. This is ridiculous. I am Terry Stewart. I can prove it. Then who, pray tell, was the woman I talked to the other day? You saw Sherry? Mm, possibly. Could the two of you please sit down? I will try to explain. You had the unfortunate circumstance of meeting my sister, Sherry. She is so disturbed. In what way? Sherry was in a special hospital. A week ago, she managed to convince the doctors to release her, and now she is missing. I've been trying to find her, but I've been so busy at work. Miss Chase, can I hire you? It's imperative that Sherry returns to the hospital. She needs help. What sort of help? Oh, this is my associate, Dr. Alex McDougall. Doctor, she's sick in the head. She's paranoid. <sighs> she thinks somebody is after her. She fabricates these wild stories of people following her. <sighs> what? did she do for a living? I really can't say. What does that mean? Sherry was a State Department administrative assistant, but now I think she might have been more than just that, and it has me very worried. I see. Please, Miss Chase, you must help me find my sister. I'm afraid that... Yes? She started telling people that someone is trying to kidnap her, to force her to do something. Which was? She never did give me any details. I beg you, please, Miss Chase, please find my sister. Well, Sydney, <clears throat> are you going to take Miss Stewart's case? I'm not sure, Alex. What do you think? Well, it's obvious that she was worried and perhaps fearful. I don't know. I just don't like the way she flipped on us. Uh, in what way? <laughs> Alex, if you came home and found someone pilfering around in your things, what would you do? Uh, call the police? Exactly! I had the distinct feeling that Terry Stewart, or whoever she is, was trying to avoid all contact with the police. Make us a drink, would you? I'll get the door. Sydney? Terry? You must help. Alex, get over here now! What's going on? Uh, oh, oh my. Let's get her to the sofa. You, you answer the phone. I'll take care of her. Sydney Chase? Sydney? Have you had any more contact with Terry Stewart? When you say contact, what do you mean? You know exactly what I mean. Why do you ask? Stay away from Terry Stewart, understand? Just stay away from her. Tony, what's going on? Let's just say that I was told to pass the message on to you and leave it at that. Tony. Just do it. This is bigger than both of us. Sydney, are you okay? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, how was your patient? Well, she's got a lot of bruises, as if someone beat her up, and pretty badly. Beat her? Or was it torture? Well, first, who was on the phone? <sighs> Ferrari, warning me away from Terry. Alex, what have we gotten ourselves into? Feeling better? Much. Thank you. Can you tell us what happened? Yeah, and why you are pretending to be Terry Stewart? But I am Terry Stewart. It's just so complicated. Do tell. Okay. I work for the State Department. I was given an assignment because of some information that we had received. It wasn't supposed to be dangerous, but it sure turned out that way. What was the assignment? It's classified. I don't care. I'm involved now. You're right. I was supposed to infiltrate a group that was working within the city. Are we talking terrorism? Yes. And they will stop at nothing to accomplish their goal. 
And what is their goal? Saturday, the president is supposed to be coming here for a meeting at the State Department. Naturally, security is on high alert, but we received information that an attempt was going to be made to assassinate the president. What were you supposed to do about it? Just get some more information. However, I was caught and held the day after I met you. I was supposed to meet with my contact, but instead I was taken. How did you manage to escape? Dumb luck. Someone didn't lock the door when I begged to go to the bathroom. So why did they beat you up? They needed to know when the president is to arrive. You said hundreds of lives are at stake. I mean, what are they going to do? Blow up the building? Yes. That's why they needed the information. I managed to get away before they got it. Well, when is he supposed to arrive? That really is classified. I can't even tell you. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. I think we're going to need a little help on this one. Tony, I need... Before you say another word, let me introduce Mr. Paul Stoddard of the FBI. Sydney Chase, and a pleasure to meet... We know who you are, Miss Chase. Sydney, I tried to warn you. Miss Chase, we have a few questions to ask you. Uh, do you need to read me my rights? Come on, Sydney. there's no need... What did Miss Terry Stewart tell you? Which one? The only one there is. Now stop the games. I think you both need to catch up a little. You know, Miss Chase, I could easily have your license suspended. And then, of course, there's always jail time. <laughs> I wouldn't want to put you out of your way. Will you cut the attitude? I will if he will. Just tell me what you know. Ferrari, are you absolutely sure this man is who he says he is? No, I just let anyone walk in here with a badge. And don't bother to check them out. I can assure you, Miss Chase, that I am with the FBI. And that I can make life very difficult for you. Is that a threat or a promise? I've had just about enough. Breathe, Tony. It's okay. Let's just say that Paul of the FBI is worried that I know where the bomb is. What bomb? You know where Terry Stewart is? First, you tell me which Terry Stewart we're talking about. Here's a picture. Is this Terry Stewart? So, this is where you live. You already know it is, with your surveillance. No need to. At least at this time. Wow. Nice to see my tax dollars at work. Can I see Terry now? Of course. Alex? Terry? Who is Alex? My friend, so don't shoot. He hates the sight of guns. Alex, are you here? Oh. Uh, Sid Sydney. Alex! What happened? What's going on, Miss Chase? Where's Terry? I... I tried to stop her, Sydney. Are you going to be okay? Oh... Oh, just a bump on the head. Uh, actually, I feel a little stupid. Let's not go into that right now. Just tell me where Terry is. The apartment above me. Well, go on! Alex isn't going anywhere, and neither am I. I'll be right back. What? Happened. Oh, well, Terry was very anxious when you left. She was pacing up and down and telling me that her mission was of utmost importance. I bet it was. Oh, oh my, my head. What, what does that mean? Who, who was that man? I'll explain later. Right now, let's get you bandaged up so I don't get more blood on my new new carpet. And, uh, right now, you are the priority, Alex. Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. Just just a little tap on the head. Don't look like it, but what happened? Well, she asked me to fix her a drink, and 
Uh, like an amateur idiot, I turned my back on her. You didn't know. It could have happened to anyone. Yes, Sydney, but it happened to me. Now what in blazes is going on? Oh. The girl that we <laughs> rescued just happens to be the bad one. Our Terry upstairs is actually the good guy. Yeah, I, I don't understand. She works for us. And who might you be, sir? This is Paul Stoddard of the FBI. Where's Terry? I need to use your phone and call Lieutenant Ferraro. Why? What happened? Terry, that is my Terry, is dead. Shot. And you let our best lead go. I wasn't here, remember? I don't care who was here. A very dangerous woman is on the loose, and if we don't find her, something very bad is going to happen. Got any coffee, Sydney? Want me to put a K-cup in or run to Starbucks for you? Why couldn't you have just stayed out of it? I didn't even know I was in it, Ferrari. Jeez. I really wish you wouldn't call me that. <laughs> Try McGoogle sometime. Is there anything that Terry Stewart told you, Doctor? Uh, only that she was worried about the mission. That it was the most important thing and nothing could stop it. What about the bomb? Well, if she is the bad one, she may have already planted it. Or perhaps she is going to deliver it on Saturday. Which means we have to lock the city down. Already taken care of, Lieutenant. What do you need from me? To stay out of my way, Chase! He's right, Sidney. Just stay out of it, please. Wow. Well, you ask so nicely, Tony. Well, if I'm not needed, I think I shall go home. I'll give you a lift. Oh, no worries. I have my car. Not anymore, Alex. Terry stole it. What? We found it abandoned about three miles from here. That's strange. <laughs> well, then I guess I will need a ride. Call me when you get home. Please. Um, the turnoff is right up here, on the left. I know, Doctor. We are going to your home. Well, I, I, I don't understand. We have a meeting to go to. I don't want your friend Chase to muck things up. Well, what are you going to do? Don't you know? We are going to kill the President of the United States. Thanks for the coffee, Sydney. No problem, Tony. What's the matter? Alex should have already called. It's not like him to make me wait. Maybe he forgot. Alex never forgets. What are you looking at? A file that was sent over from the State Department about our fake Terry Stewart. Here, look at this picture. You won't believe what this woman has done. Like what? She's part of a small group. They call themselves Freedom Fighters if you can believe that. They're responsible for several cases of bombs and assassinations around the country. A couple of them right here in this city. Such as? Remember that bomb that took out the library? <laughs> they claimed that one? Still an open case. Never could find any evidence, but apparently the FBI had plenty. Why didn't they do something? Eighteen people died in that explosion. I know. <gasps> Tony! What is this picture supposed to be of? Let me see. A photo of a meeting of this group. Says it was taken by an undercover operative about three years ago. Do you see what I see? Oh my god! I'm calling Alex. I have a bad feeling you aren't going to reach him. You people have lost your minds! On the contrary, we are completely sane. It is time this country wakes up. And this is the best way to do that? Violence is the only way. Now shut up! Sorry, Dr. McDougal. I really am. But don't worry. When the bomb goes off, you won't feel anything. It's over in a split second. No pain. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. That is so comforting. In a little over an hour, our plan will be finished. Let's get out of here while we still can. Hold it. Both of you. How the hell did he... Forget that and just shoot him. 
Don't do it. Alex! Are you alright? Am I alright? Am I alright? It would be nice not to be tied to a bomb that is currently ticking happily away. Bomb squad is on the way. Alex, let's get you out of this. Yes, that would be wonderful. Wait, Sydney, don't! What is it? It might be booby trapped. I'll go and see what's keeping the bomb squad. Uh, Sydney, what did he mean by that? It means I'm staying right here with... with... Sydney? What is it? How long did they say until the bombing? Uh, at least an hour. Something's wrong. The clock mechanism must be broken. I'm afraid you ask. What does it say? That we have less than two minutes? The, the bomb squad won't make it. Get out of here, Sydney. No! I won't leave you! Sydney, please! There's not much time! Let me see. Um. Hmm. Okay. Alex, any idea how to defuse bombs? This is no time for jokes, Sydney Chase! Who's joking? All right, all right. There is usually a, a red and a blue wire. There's three. I see a blue one, but I'm colorblind. Well, then try the one on the left. Are you just trying to get to me? I'm flipping dyslexic. Left is here. Right is here. Right? Okay, three wires. Maybe I should just flip a coin. Sydney... Guess you're glad to be alive, Doctor. Oh, very much so, and this drink is helping quite a bit. How did you know about Paul Stoddard? Our friend, Tony, showed me a picture, and standing right next to Terry was Paul, larger than life. When you didn't call like you said that you would, Sydney put two and two together. Well, good thing. Uh, but Sydney... How did you know which wire to cut? <laughs> I didn't. What? If it was the wrong one, we would have been blown up in a few seconds anyway. I mean, luckily it was the right one. So obviously you cut the right one. I don't know. I noticed that the bad Terry was the only one that wore the glitter makeup. I saw the wire that was shiny and figured it was the last one she plugged in, and I cut that one. It was a 50-50, but I did pick the right one, and you are alive. <laughs> I suddenly don't feel... Uh, don't, don't feel... I'll get him some water. Might want to make that some wine, Tony. <laughs> I think when he wakes up, I may be in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> Paul Stoddard was only wounded and is currently awaiting trial. Uh, Terry Stewart, on the other hand, managed to get away and is still on the most wanted list. As for Sydney and me, yes, when I came to, she was indeed in trouble. The trouble I take to love her even more for saving my life yet again. Casebook of Sydney Chase was produced and edited by Crimson McKenzie and written and directed by Winslow Swan. Our cast included Mick Davis as your announcer and playing the part of Paul, with Dave Arkhipov as Ferraro, Winslow Swan as Alex, and starring Crimson McKenzie as Sydney Chase. Also included in the cast, Rue Snow and Annie Mick. The Casebook of Sidney Chase was produced and edited by Crimson McKenzie and written and directed by Winslow Swan. Join us again next time for another adventure from the Casebook of Sidney Chase.